application of advanced training in plant breeding known as ATPBR is a non-government, non-profit making organization that works to strengthen plant breeding capacity in India. And today we have with us Dr. K.K. Narayanan, Director ATPBR to chair the session. Under his leadership, ATPBR nurtures experts through inclusive and multidisciplinary approach. He also helps agri entrepreneurs through capacity and capability development programs. May I please invite Dr. Narayanan to come up on the dais. It is also my great pleasure to invite Dr. Partha Das Gupta, ex-head Syngenta Foundation to co-chair the session. Dr. Partha Das Gupta is an expert in agricultural development, including field and horticultural crops, livestock farming, agribusiness, including seed system, agricultural extension and rural development, agri-enterprise development, and many, many such activities. Thank you so much, sir. I kindly um, invite you to be on the dais. To begin with the session, may I invite our chair and co-chair to light the ceremonial lamps. Thank you so much. May I now request Dr. Narayanan and Dr. Das Gupta to kindly begin with the first session. Over to you, sir. Good morning, friends. Welcome to the second day proceedings of this conference. It is indeed a pleasure to meet all of you again. So this session is on sustainable agriculture. We have been talking about sustainability, but it has got many dimensions. On the one hand, we talk about being friendly to the environment, environmental sustainability. We can talk about financial sustainability. There are many other aspects of sustainability which we can discuss. But I think the one that comes to your mind first is 
how can we be friendly to environment when we do farming? Now farming, even though we all know but we don't recall or we don't realize, is a human driven activity. Now from the very advent of agriculture, man has tried to modify the nature and nurture of organisms in their domestication. When I say nature, it is the various traits and uh, that uh, you know that it's all determined by the genetic makeup or the genome or the genes which comprises the genome. Nurture is the ambience you provide for the nature to express or manifest itself. So in this, you must remember, I'm not talking about lakes and mountains when I say nature, it's the inherent traits of an organism. So if I am five feet, 10 inches tall, that's in my nature. If I am short tempered, that's my nature. If a crop yields, let's say five tons per hectare, given the conditions, that's its nature. If it resists insects pests, that's its nature. For the nature to express, you need to provide the right nurture or the ambience. And we have been manipulating, modifying both nature and nurture of crops, of animals, which are all part of the agriculture we talk of today. In the early days, it was all being done experientially or through intuitively to intuition. But it was not until 1900 with the rediscovery of the Mendel's laws, which was first stated 35 years ago in 1865, that there was a deliberateness and a direction to the way we manipulate the nature. And then you can know about the developments. Today you can have technologies which even talk about editing a single letter in the genome. We talk about genome editing and I'm sure many of you are aware of it. All that is part of the continuum. So modifying the genetic aspects or genetic enhancement of the crops to create the potential to yield high or say resist an insect pest or resist a disease or give a certain quality which is what we desire has been going on. But modifying the nature only infuses the potential in the crop. And like Norman Borlaug famously said, you can't eat potential. The potential has to be expressed. And for that, you need to provide the nurture or the ambience. Many people tend to confuse. Sustainable farming means they call it natural farming. Sometimes some of our government also zero budget farming, natural farming. In my view, natural farming is an oxymoron in the term because farming cannot be natural. It is human driven. It is as artificial as this auditorium, the cell phone you use, because if we had not intervened, we will not have the farming of today. But farming can be nature friendly. We need to be cognizant of what is the impact that farming can have on the environment. So I talk about sustainability from the dimension of environmental sustainability by saying that we need to make farming nature friendly. The concepts of nature friendly farming, like less use of chemicals, less use of pesticides, optimal use of fertilizers, mixing, natural farm aid manure with fertilizer so that prevents some of the bad effects like runoffs, eutrophication, uh, 
target, non-target insects and mammals being affected, all these can be avoided. Now, in terms of modifying the nature, I think most of it is contained in the seed, which is the primary input for agriculture. So today, you can infuse traits into the seed, which now allows you to reduce the use of harmful chemicals. You can infuse traits into the seed, which allow it to sustain the vagaries or the different changes in the weather. So these all should be dimensions when we in a country which is required not to compromise on the production or productivity because we have so many, one-fifth of all uh, people in the world live in this country and we don't have that much area. So the density of population is high, the needs are changing with increasing incomes. So without compromising, how do you build sustainability he is through creating these changes, infusing these traits into the seed. And seed is a primary input. And seed becomes very important. How you manage the seed, the seed industry, which develops, who are the purveyors along with the public system in developing improved seeds, new seeds, and also in disseminating them to the ultimate users has to play a major role. So the first talk in this session is by my friend Ram Kaundinya. Do we have him online, please? Hello. You can put him up on the screen if he is there. Yes, I'm here. Do we here. have Ram Kaundinya? <clears throat> I'm here. Okay, hi Ram, I don't know if you can hi. hear me. I can, I can hear you. Okay, I was just introducing the topic. So I'm just introducing uh, Dr. Ram Kaundinya, Mr. Ram Kaundinya. He's a graduate in agriculture with a management degree from the Indian Institute of Management. He's a veteran of the seed industry, uh, not just the seed industry, but generally the agri input industry. He has led several enterprises and uh, now he is the uh, Secretary General of the Federation of Indian Seed Industries. I have had many occasions to be with him on several fora. We have worked together on several initiatives and it is a great pleasure to invite Dr. or Mr. Ram Kaundinya. Uh, he deserves a doctorate, so <laughs> pardon me for calling <laughs> Mr. Ram Kaundinya to this forum to present his views on what should be the priorities for the Indian seed industry. Ram, the floor is yours. Thank I'm not you. sure, can you see the audience in front of you? I cannot see the audience. I can see the stage. Your I voice, you are muted, sir. No, I'm not muted. Probably they have to connect my audio. One second, let us fix this technical uh, glitch. Can yeah. you get his voice heard uh, to the people? To the people, in people, 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 people. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 well. Okay, shall I start? Okay, uh, Ram, the floor is yours. And Thank what you. we will do is we will have yeah. leave some time for interaction. And uh, I will ask somebody to pass on sheets of paper or if you have something, if you have questions, uh, you can pass it on to us and on your behalf, uh, I will, we will get uh, Ram Kaundinya to respond. Is that okay? Agreed by all of you? Okay, so let's do it that way. Okay, <clears throat> so Ram, the floor is yours. Yes, Thank sir, you Ravi so Chandran, you have a quick question? Yeah. Because somebody else is managing the chat box. It may be sometimes low technology is better technology. <laughs> we call it appropriate technology. Sustainable. Sustainable. So, Ram, the floor is yours. We have you. uh, an audience of uh, uh, guests, invitees, eminent people from industry, from academia, and a large number of young friends out here from various Great. colleges. So over to you, Ram. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Narayanan. It's a pleasure, as always, uh, you know, speaking 
uh, when you are chairing sessions. Uh, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today and talking to all of you. Most of you being students, I always get very enthused when I speak to students because uh, I am also a teacher for the last 10 years or so. So it always gives me great pleasure. Uh, so I think uh, I will talk a little bit um, more into detail about what are the priorities for the seed sector? How do we reset the priorities of the seed sector for this decade? Uh, two years uh, or let's say one year is already gone in this new decade and the second year is uh, in progress. But we still are at uh, the early stage of the decade and we can talk about what we want to do during this decade. And especially in the context of sustainable agricultural practices, um, in my opinion, I think sustainability starts with uh, especially in agriculture and food and agriculture, sustainability has to start with uh, adequate production. You know, if we don't produce enough, anyway, there is no sustainability either for food or for the overall food system. So I think um, if we accept the fact that uh, we have to produce enough food for the population um, that we have in the country, Seed is the most important input, which has the genetic potential to produce enough. Uh, however, uh, all the country is not the same. The country has many, multiple layers of consumers. So we have some large number of people in the country who need food at affordable prices. And we also have the other part of the population, which is at the slightly higher income levels, which needs, which can afford to buy food according to their needs or food that is designed to their needs at a, even a higher price. So we have multiple layers like that. If we go into the details, we will find that there are many layers of consumers who need different types of things based on their income levels and their educational levels and um, their general lifestyles. So keeping all those things in mind, and if we, if we keep in mind the fact that agriculture is only a production system, right? If you consider the overall food system, it is an end-to-end -end system, but agriculture is only a production system, and it is meeting the demand of the consumers. Consumers are nothing but you and me. We are all consumers. So what do we want to eat? Agriculture has to produce. Traditionally, agriculture has produced what it could produce, and we consumed whatever was produced. But that is changing now <clears throat> and the need for demand-driven agriculture is increasing. So it is in that context that when we talk of sustainability as uh, sustainable development goal number 12 says that responsible consumption and responsible production, both are important. It is not just that production is can be uh, standalone sustainable if the consumption becomes unsustainable. I think we need to look at both ends of the calculation of the equation and then say that we need to promote responsible consumption among people so that people are not eating or consuming things which consume a lot of <clears throat> natural resources <clears throat> to produce. For example, rice. The amount of water that is consumed by rice through the transplanted uh, cultivation system is humongous. So, but if more and more people want to eat rice, then more and more rice has to be produced. Then that becomes unsustainable for, from the environment point of view. So I think <clears throat> it depends on both that how do we make the overall food system sustainable? In that context, seed industry has a huge role to play. And I would like to talk a little more about what is it that the seed industry should look at during this uh, decade so that it becomes more, as we call, a market-driven industry. You know, seed industry has to become market-driven because agriculture has to become market-driven. Both have to be driven by how the market is demanding things. And like I mentioned, market also has to become sustainable if the overall system has to become sustainable. So let me share my screen to show you a few slides. <clears throat> I hope all of you can see my screen. Dr. Narayan, can you see the screen?
you can see you are on mute dr narayan it's 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 okay let me continue seed industry currently is around uh, 3 billion dollars industry in india and there is an overall plan that we should reach about 8 billion dollar size by 2030 which includes 1.4 billion dollars of exports we want to build so if you look at a minus exports because our current exports are um, not more than 100 million dollars so we are almost talking of just above doubling of domestic uh, business of seed industry that means the industry size has to double but more important than doubling the number is that we have to enhance the stature of indian seed industry uh to the global high table uh, among the seed industry country, among the seed industries in different countries it should become a world class industry a, a, a world class sector that can compete with the best in the world provide the best quality seeds and planting material to farmers in india and also outside to enhance sustainable farming practices because sustainable farming is now uh, the buzzword and it is also it has to become a part of our overall vision so this is how i would define that what seed industry is trying to do during this decade but if we talk of the decade what will this decade look like if we want to map some of the key things let's look at there are two things here one is on the demand side which is the first box on the demand side population will cross 150 crores so to that extent the demand will increase demand for large volume of affordable food will continue to grow this is what i mentioned that we still have 1.6 lakh crores worth of food say food say food subsidy budget per year which shows actually the need for affordable food production in the country higher income groups will look for safe nutritious and traceable food this is also a trend that is increasing demand for cereals will reduce and increase for protein fat and minerals so these are some of the things which are the demand side thing uh, at the domestic front and government itself has got a target of uh, exporting agricultural produce to the tune of 100 billion dollars currently we are only around 40 billion dollars so this will go to 100 billion dollars and government also wants to increase the value added component of this from the current 15% to 30% that means out of 100 almost 30 billion dollars will have to be value added products not export of just raw agricultural produce that is on the demand side but on the production side if you see farmers profitability has to increase without any doubt this is the most important question that we are all discussing for the last few years and we have achieved a lot in the country in agriculture but we our farmers have not made money and this is a big issue that we have to address climate change is on us upon us already it will impact agricultural production in a big way and we must be ready for that demand is to conserve natural resources and to promote sustainable farming practices this is on the increase natural resources like water and soil we have to and biodiversity have to be protected have to be conserved and so some of the new technologies will come more into picture like micro irrigation new economic practices digital and satellite technologies biological products all these things will come more into operation but remember that all of them have to be used on the crops and the crops have to come out of seeds so there is a there is an inter uh, relationship between all these new technologies and seeds there is a need for change in cropping patterns we have to reduce cereal cultivation and increase oil seeds vegetables and pulses cultivations oil seeds you all know that uh, we are importing a uh, huge amount of oil edible oil and uh, 80000 crores to 90000 crores and uh, last year it has actually crossed even more so it is a big issue uh, you also know that our fertilizer subsidy has gone to 1.5 lakh crores last year so there is a need to reduce chemical usage not only to save cost but also to save the environment uh, so need for changing in cropping patterns non crop production systems need a lot of attention dairy poultry goat rearing etc this is now growing faster than crop in terms of gdp growth gdp contributions so the day is not far off i think by the end of this decade 
the non crop production systems may even produce more than the agricultural production system in the country so we need crop cropping system in the country so we need to also provide enough uh, food uh, food for human beings but feed for all the uh, livestock and others so that is also a responsibility of the agricultural production system value chain development like i talked about value chain development and market access both domestic and export market access for farmers free access to the markets and making them interact directly with the market reducing supply chains uh, length of the supply chain and connecting them directly to the market all this will help the farmers in better price discovery and as you know the uh, the doubling farmers income uh, uh, authority has also made a very big report on how to double farmers incomes and this is one of the key recommendations that we must develop value chains and clusters must be developed and they, a lot of effort has to be made to add value to farmers production labor is a big issue labor saving mechanization will come in a big way during this decade digitization of operations will come in a big way and we are seeing a huge um, huge growth in the number and uh, uh, the amount of work being done on the agri tech front a lot of um, digital technology driven agricultural startups are coming up e-commerce platforms are really scaling up very fast in the last uh, two years when covid was high e-commerce actually picked up quite a lot farmers are now more than 2 crore farmers are using uh, internet and uh, digital platforms uh, there is a very good progress that has been made so i think that is also something which will grow very rapidly modern technology usage must go up i only hope that it will be allowed to go up but it must go up whether it is biotechnology or digital technology or nanotechnology and others which will actually help us in reducing chemical consumption in our agriculture i think this is also and also to conserve natural resources so all these are things which we can say that the this is how the decade will look like and uh, so if we talk of how the seed industry has to plan its priorities it has to plan its priorities on the basis of this scenario building that we are doing so let's look at i have identified five priority areas where seed industry will be working and i will talk about them priority number 1 is development of high performing cultivars with high genetic potential to suit the future that awaits us the future that awaits us i have already spoken about it so how do we develop high performing cultivars with high genetic potential this is what is called the research priorities 22 uh, 2022 to 2030 i will talk a little more a little bit in depth about where the research has to focus seed seed research when i say research i am talking of crop improvement research uh research priorities number 1 must be market driven and sustainable crop development must be supported through seed development that means if market needs certain characteristics in the output the seed should be able to deliver those characteristics to the farmer through the seed so that when the farmer grows the crop he is able to for example nutrition if the seed is able to give more nutritious crops uh, nutrition fortified crops or if the seed is able to give chemical um, free cultivation possibilities so because consumer needs uh, less of chemical usage uh, or less usage of water less use of fertilizers all this will go in this first point breeding for yield enhancement to global standards to higher genetic um, uh, you know in spite of all the progress we made uh, our yields are still uh, not up to the global standards in many crops except in wheat perhaps where we are very uh, high but uh, in many other crops we are much below the global standards so how do we breed for yield improvements through higher genetic potential is the point number 1 because like i said in the beginning if we don't increase yields if we don't produce more if you don't produce more efficiently sustainability is not possible we cannot be inefficient in production and at the same time want to be sustainable these two are not they don't go together so you have to improve sustainability only by improving efficiency in our production system which means the efficiency means our yields per unit of input consumed whether it is water or fertilizer or whatever it is natural resources and must go breeding new cutting edge technology tools like biotechnology 
you know uh, we must use the modern technology we cannot make our farmers export agricultural products while they are using old technologies it is like uh, you fight uh, like when the when the foreign invaders came with guns and um, um, cannons uh, if our kings were fighting with swords uh, then obviously you will know what is the difference between the two so if our farmers are still using old technologies and the outside farmers are using latest biotechnology and other things then this is not a it is not a common uh, it is not a it is not the same ground on which they are fighting so we have to equip our farmers with higher uh, modern technologies oil seeds pulses vegetables have to be under focus of the seed industry to improve yields and quality of output because these were countries losing a lot of money and country will need a lot more production in the next decade developing varieties for conserving natural resources water soil and biodiversity I talked about it and to address the abiotic stresses including stress due to deficiency of nutrition in soil i think um, we have uh, of course there are many examples of uh, how uh, what are the uh, various stresses abiotic stresses and uh, drought is one but you know because of climate change we also have a lot of uh, unseasonal rains and water logging and floods and things like that so it works both ways and uh, we may need uh, varieties which can be um, uh, which should be able to resist both the kind of things and uh, soil of course is the most important thing we we know that last year was declared as the year of the soil by fao and then there is a lot of effort made uh, to make sure that we give back to the soil what we are taking out of it we have to build organic matter we have to do many things which improve the condition of the soil but if the seed is demanding more and more chemical inputs into the soil then that is a problem here so i think we need to develop varieties which can conserve um, natural resources development of climate resilient crop varieties uh, this i talked about that can withstand weather extremities develop varieties with enhanced nutrition biofortification we talked about it with the desired grain quality varieties that suit agronomic practices if we want to promote agronomic practices like direct seed rice or minimum tillage or hdps systems in cotton maize and other crops all of them need proper plant architecture and seed variety development to be done by the seed industry you cannot get the best results out of a dsr or a minimum tillage or micro irrigation or anything other new technologies we talked about you won't get the best uh, results if you don't have appropriate seed developed for that purpose so that is also a very important area where seed industry has to work we have to develop varieties resistant to biotic stresses key pests and reduce chemical usage if there is inherent uh, resistance to pests in the variety to the extent we will reduce chemical usage some of this resistance can come through you know, breeding activities some of the resistance can come through uh, biotechnology it could be even gm technology which we have seen in the case of vt cotton how it has successfully reduced uh, the uh, the impact of uh, boll worms on uh, on cotton so similarly it should be possible and it should be high priority for us to build this resistance to biotic stresses um, in chemical and uh, reduce chemical usage i have just given examples of tbw and faw here but um, there are more like that and i will show in the next slide develop varieties that suit modern technologies i mentioned this like mechanization if we have to mechanize we need the different types of varieties cotton rice and maize will be the first priorities on mechanization greenhouse cultivation for example vegetables we have to still develop good local varieties for greenhouse cultivation we still import a lot of those um, seeds today for greenhouse cultivation micro irrigation systems uh, also need uh, separate types of varieties um, to be tweaked not uh, so different but to be tweaked to suit the drip systems or um, other micro irrigation systems herbicide tolerance is a big opportunity in this decade because weed management is becoming a big issue in most of the crops particularly cotton rice wheat soybean weed menace is very high these are the crops on which the chemical weed market is very large chemical weed side market is very large so if we can develop some technologies uh, through seed which can reduce uh, the in, the use of chemicals here and use other methods to control weeds 
i think that is also something which will contribute towards sustainable cultivation practices so these are some of the research priorities continuing them we also have to do research investment into developing neglected crops and op crops there are certain research uh, needs in uh, op crops which have not been met by the private industry so much um, most of the investment has gone from uh, public institutions like icr but i think it's time for private industry to step in here also there are some neglected crops which may be very important for some regional at regional level and for some communities we need to also put some effort into that using wild relatives and land races as well as modern technology so these are two they may look like uh, contradictions but they are not contradictions using wild relatives and land races uh, from the traditional systems also at the same time using modern technological tools uh, using biotechnological tools uh, both together we can break yield barriers we have hit yield plateau in many crops practically yield increases have been very very stagnant in the last 20 25 years so we have to break it and unless we break it we cannot produce enough to keep um, the hopes of sustainability alive so set up ppp projects with icr and critical projects you know we there is a great need for private industry and icr to work together on some critical projects of national importance Uh, especially because icr has got huge genetic potential uh, you know base over many decades they have built it up and uh, private industry has got the <coughs> technology platforms and the money to invest i think these two should come together uh, starting with some pre breeding projects and then going into some of the more advanced areas this is also an area where which can contributes towards uh, whatever i have written earlier that uh, you know the thing of research priorities um, can be also contributed by this if you just look at vegetables markers for quality to traits to be taken up metabolomics and proteomics to be targeted along with mutation breeding and dh for past turn around so a lot of investment to be done in uh, technology space valuation breeding we talked about that how do we add value in vegetables like tomato lycopene tss flavors shelf life watermelon seedless etc okra and sweet corn high flavonoids brinjal flavonoids etc so i just listed some of these things this is by no means a comprehensive list and i will also show you some more uh, of these uh, listings i made basically to say that some of these value added breeding will meet what the market needs and this is what i was talking about market driven breeding uh, will be uh, possible through value added breeding and uh, so that is also something which must go simultaneously along with large scale production at low cost this breeding is also important both are equally important because india as a country is developing rapidly our average incomes are going up demand for vegetables is going up uh, as the income goes up so there is also a need for more uh, uh, you know um, delivery of nutrition through these things or delivery of what the customer wants to have you know all that will come through value added breeding in addition to breeding things i would also say that we must set up world class breeding and biotech research infrastructure under contract research model unfortunately technology becomes um, confined to companies who can invest large amounts of money but the small regional companies will not be able to access some of those things so it there is a need for setting up a, under a ppp a ppp project perhaps a, a, an outsourcing model a tolling model type of a thing for both biotech and uh, breeding infrastructure which can be made use of by small regional companies this will democratize the research function Uh, because we have to upgrade we have to increase the level of overall research in the country uh, we invest only about 3% of the overall revenue of seed industry in research now which is very low globally the standard is 10 to 12% so our research investment is very low and one of the reasons i will also say is that low research investment has been in seed industry one of the reasons uh, is also low intellectual property protection if we don't protect intellectual property effectively it is a disincentive for um, in research investments and that has been our one of our problems in the country even if the law is there if those who break the law are not punished if the enforcement of the law is not very quick and efficient 
uh, it will still not <clears throat> serve the purpose. So that we are still in that situation where intellectual property protection is still not up to the global mark. And because of that, research investments are still not going up. I think this is an area where industry has to work with the government to increase the enforcement of IP law. We have, an, we have a law, PPV and FR law is there, but enforcing it and making it quick and efficient is an area where uh, industry has to work with the government. So we have to, the, as a part of research, uh, we have to also improve our testing methods. How do we test our varieties in different parts of the country? And how do we do data management systems? They should be on par with the best in the world because only when we are able to show to the best companies in the world, best research institutions in the world, that we are on par with them, only then they will respect us. Only then we will get more work. Only then we will go reach that high table I talked about in the opening slide. And uh, like I said, because it is a demand-driven agriculture, we are trying to meet. So the, the demand for food is met by the food industry. Uh, but right now, there's not much of interaction between food industry and seed industry. This is something we need to bridge that gap so that the seed industry can also take up customized breeding programs for the food industry. I have just listed a few examples based on some inputs I got from some of the experts that, and this is by no means a comprehensive list. These are some of the areas where some attention has to be paid in breeding in this decade, in paddy, gall mid, submergence, tolerance, plant architecture to increase the number of plants per acre, synchronized tillering, earliness, fertilizer use efficiency, water use efficiency, variety suitable for mechanical operations, increasing yield, grain quality, etc. In cotton, uh, how to handle PBW, sucking pests, and CLCV, HTPS, like that, these are all listed here. In mustard, how to fight stem rot and white rust, vegetables. Yield adaptability and disease resistance are the three major factors or three major requirements for which breeding has to be done. You know, there are, I just gave three examples, Indian greens like coriander, palak and methi need improved shelf life and improving improved tolerance to high temperatures. Chili breeding for resistance to CMV, CLCV and Pregnos. They said there's a new pest in chilies uh, called thrips and uh, it is an invasive pest it has come from outside. So when such um, disasters happen, uh, the, the, the technical or technological answers have to come very, very rapidly. So some of those things also we have to keep in mind, like uh, FAW is also an, an invasive pest like that, which has come in maize. So we have to also keep uh, preparing for such things. Cucurbits breed for resistance to tummy stem blight, DM, PM, and et cetera. So these are just a few things. So overall on research, I would like to say that there is a need for us to upgrade our research capabilities and also our research outputs to global standards and to meet the requirements of the um, uh, demand-driven agriculture we are talking about and really make seed of such high genetic um, potential that could, it can meet these differentiated segmented market requirements. That is the most important part. It is not one single block of market. The market is segmented and we must breed for different segments of the market. Priority number two is to produce world-class seed. While research is on one side of the equation, the second side of the equation is that whatever comes out of research, how do you produce it? And then how do you deliver it to the farmers? Which actually talks of the production systems in production. We have to modernize a lot of our production systems. As you know, we still do or we do contract production of seed and we still need to formalize that professionalize that system we have to diversify seed production areas away from the traditional geographies to reduce load and to de-risk the large volume of production you know if we are talking of taking more than doubling the size of the industry uh, we have to produce that much seed right so it cannot be happening without production capacity going up Production, as you know, seed is produced in the farmer's fields through contract production. After that, it comes to the plant for processing. So while processing plant capacities can be built with money, seed production capabilities in the field cannot be built just with money. It is a time-taking thing. It takes a huge amount of effort to train farmers in new areas, find appropriate areas where suitable agroclimatic conditions are there. And all that needs a lot of effort. And this is something where what I mean by diversification of seed production areas, 
and uh, to support large volume projections that we are making for the seed industry. SPR, which is seed production research function, has to gain more prominence in the, uh, in the organizations to improve seed production methods and seed production efficiencies. At the end of the day, we should be able to produce seed at globally competitive cost. Then only we will be able to build uh, export markets. So that all has to come through SPR function. Then world-class processing facilities to be scaled up to improve quality of seed. But very important aspect is quality priorities. You know, we have to improve the quality of seed. Our seed should be of world-class quality. There should not be a difference between the quality of seed produced in a Western country, modern country, and in India. If, our, if a farmer in US gets a particular quality of seed, I don't see any reason why a farmer in India should get anything less than that. So I think we have to build our systems to produce quality of those standards. Seed health management uh, and testing has to be enhanced to, to global standards. This will help in import and export of seed. Increased use of molecular tools like markers for genetic purity testing. Uh, we, have to, we have to build some new methodologies, uh, new technologies to, to overcome some of the uh, lacunae that, we have, that have been there in our traditional systems. Seed enhancement technologies, which are very low currently in India. Seed treatment we do to a large extent. But other things, seed coating, priming, polymer coating, and then in general, seed enhancement technologies have to be increased. They will increase the cost, but they can also be used in, in at least to start with some of the seeds which go to the higher end of the market. Modern technologies like um, you know various types of treatments, molecular impulse technology, artificial intelligence to be used in quality management. We have to upgrade our quality labs with modern technologies. Capacity building among Indian companies for quality management of new technology based products. Like if you are getting GM seeds or gene edited crops seeds, uh, how do you test them? How do you do quality testing? And how do you do it in a way that is done in advanced countries? So, DNA based methods and others to be developed. Um, automation and digitization of germination tests with, to speed up the process. Accreditation of more labs under ISTA, NAIBL, IS. This is very important for us that uh, uh, the other day I was in Hyderabad when Telangana government opened their ISTA accredited lab. This is only the second lab in the government system in the country uh, with a ISTA accreditation. There are other five labs in the country with, uh, with private industry which are ISTA accredited. We need more such things. We need one lab at least in each state so that the, uh, the overall quality standards, testing standards and uh, quality management processes uh, improve. Uh, we're important to develop quality mindset among all industry players. You know, in when we say an in industry, we have more than 400 companies, seed companies. So all are a part of industry, but our industry has a small head and a long tail. So unless we improve the quality standards of the tail end companies, the end of the tail companies, the smallest of the small companies, unless their quality mindset improves, unless their quality production improves, it is not possible for all the farmers in the country to get high quality seeds. So I think we have to bring that in as a part of our effort of the industry in this decade. Priority number three, uh, set up and uh, follow well-defined professional and consistent business processes that enhance the value of Indian seed industry. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we can become world-class and we will be respected only if all these processes are very consistent and professional, predictable, and uh, are value-adding. So some of them I have listed. IP is the most important thing as when the world looks at any market, they will look at IP. Do we generate enough IP? Do we manage it properly? Do we protect it properly? Do we have a healthy respect for IP among industry players? Not only in industry, I think in general in the country, whether it is among students or research labs or uh, industry or anywhere, there should be a healthy respect for intellectual property because an intellectual property comes uh, through a lot of effort and investment. So it cannot be just uh, stolen or copied with, uh, without any proper respect for it. So I think all this has to be built. This is more a cultural thing we have to build. We have to build the capacity of our human resources to be of high quality professionals, digital proficiency, progressive attitude, respect for IP and mindset of farmer welfare. Farmer welfare first, 
that must be the mindset especially all of you students who are going to enter into the world later and work for somebody or the other uh, you all must also understand that when we do com commerce when we do commercial activities we still must keep farmers welfare as our first priority that is very important the continuous flow of new technologies into the market as an industry we must make sure through our own processes within the industry within our industry we must have sufficient processes and frameworks in place for commercial arrangements to bring new technologies to the market continuously we haven't had a new gm technology in the country for more than 15 years now this speaks very poorly of uh, our industry as well as our regulatory system that we haven't been able to bring new technologies into the country so i think industry also is equally responsible to bring new technologies through self discipline through working together within frameworks and eventually technologies will benefit the farmers industry will make some money in the process but that is not the that is not the objective objective is that the farmer should get the benefit he should have access to the best technologies that farmers in other countries have got so for that at least industry must work together uh, digitization of most of the operations we have to do as an industry and use big data analytics and artificial intelligence to professionalize industry operations we have to promote sustainable agricultural practices among farmers and create necessary breeding support systems to achieve that this is also one of our responsibilities if we have to meet sdg 12 it is also seed industry which has to contribute along with other agri input industries but i think seed industry has a bigger role to play in developing uh, sustainable systems in the market and uh, this is the last priority i would say is that there is a target of 10000 crores of export to be built by 2030 and this is something which cannot be done overnight this calls for a lot of activity uh, so some of the priorities here are we have to develop specific market oriented varieties for export markets uh, which are suitable to different geographies you know that seed travels um, um, along the um, latitude so we should identify what are our target markets and then Uh, develop varieties suitable to different markets which are within falling within that uh, latitudes and uh, identify products on domestic market that are suitable for export market so you can either develop products purely for export markets or develop products for both domestic and export market but uh, export markets need a lot of investment in export development activity through intense engagement in target countries government also has got some plan, uh, some programs to Uh, you know help the companies with this help the industry with this and we must participate in that and uh, there is something called contract seed production is a very big uh, industry in the world and india must position itself as a preferred destination for contract seed production because we have such a variety of agroclimatic conditions here that we can produce seed for other parts of the world and if we become uh, good at it but for that what do we have to do we have to build confidence among customers people who order contract production must have confidence in us we must have high quality production systems we must have respect for ip because a lot of contract production involves uh, those customers to give their parency to us so if they know that you don't have respect for ip in the country they will not do this they will not give those contracts meticulously meeting all export commitments and timelines and the aggressive branding you know once we have taken an order we must deliver it on time as per the norms as per the quality standards specifications timelines everything so we cannot give excuses when we are building export businesses all this and there are many other things government has to do in terms of uh, providing uh, support at airports dry ports to be created uh, and uh, plant quarantine certification to be done a lot of things are there we have also given a uh, list to the government on this but industry has to work with the government to provide that enabling support to make india a seed export hub with a 10% seed, uh, share in the global seed trade that's what i mentioned 1.4 billion dollars because global seed trade is around 14 to 15 billion dollars currently so why can't we target for at least 10% out of that in another 8 years time so this where i think uh, one of the key tasks lies for indian seed industry so i think those are a few things i wanted to share with all of you um, it is actually um, a lot of transformational work to be done during this uh, decade this decade will be transformational for the farmers because they have to shift 
in a big way uh, towards modernization uh, it is transformational for our agriculture in general <coughs> and it is also transformational for all agri input companies but more specifically for the seed industry so those are a few things from my side i hope uh, the youngsters who are all there uh, would have uh, picked up some useful points from here and all the experts who are there i'm sure many of them would have known most of these points earlier but um, i hope that uh, i made justice to what you were all expecting thank you very much back to you dr narayanan thank you, thank you. the echo thank you uh, thank you ram uh, you painted a very broad picture of the priorities for the seed sector very useful takeaways i think uh, and also you completed well in time so we have time for a few questions and interactions uh, i already have the first question i see some volunteers actually going around and collecting questions whatever you have got you can bring it to me the first one i already have uh, this is from as expected uh, from our farmer friend uh, ravi chandran <laughs> and uh, he has a, a very interesting question uh, i will not read it out but i will actually rephrase it uh, giving my own small twist to the okay. question i hope it's okay ravi okay so uh, he says that uh, you know in terms of uh, cereal crops rice uh, cotton uh, or fiber crops like cotton uh, maize there are a lot of technologies already available so they need to be deployed they have been developed and the private seed industry is well focused on deploying some of these technologies and i agree with him when he says that uh, crops like uh, pulses and oil seeds are also equally important in the context of uh, india and indian farming system in driving sustainability but uh, there doesn't seem to be as much interest especially of the private sector either in developing or deploying technologies through these crops so as somebody who is actually a voice for the indian seed industry what do you think uh, would actually prompt or persuade the private sector to take a little more interest in developing technologies and deploying technologies through pulses and oil seeds does that also cover so, your uh, concerns yes so okay. ram over to yeah. you yeah so thank you i think i touched upon it briefly when i said that there should be some work done on op crops and also on some of the projects of national priority with icr uh, i think um, private industry has stayed away from op crops for well known reasons that the, the the possibility for value capture was low in op crops that was the reason because of which they stayed away for a long time but uh, in the last 10 years we find that um, the tendency of the farmer to improve his uh, srr what is called seed replacement rate uh, has really improved and now farmers are buying new seed more frequently than before which is a good thing because that is uh, improving the yields it will improve the yields if he does that um, so that is one encouraging factor for the private industry to invest more in this industry in this in this uh, crops but the real crux still remains that lack of intellectual property protection for work uh, if it is put into op crops i think that is where we need to have some that's what i mentioned that when we talk of uh, um, enforcement of uh, something like ppo and fr we need to work more towards the enforcement aspect at the ground level uh, so that is where it will give more confidence but i agree that uh, that's why i said that uh, some public institutions like icr have got a huge genetic pool with them on these crops whether it is uh, pulses or oil seeds in oil seeds you know that mustard is in a different category because mustard uh, uh, the work has been quite high and hybridization in mustard is also quite rapid now and quite high right now i think mustard has made enough progress but if you look at other crops like groundnuts and then um, um, even soybean to a large extent the private industry has stayed out i think this is where we need some level of uh, work together with icr and with public institutions we are trying we have discussed this with icr also and we hope to put in place some system by which 
we are able to transfer a lot of technologies which are available even outside India, which can be applied in these crops. But we need uh, sufficient supportive uh, environment for that. Community, I think this, so the, uh, I agree with you. The solution has to be in uh, making sure we have proper value capture system for OP yeah. crops, and then the attention will be there. I have another question, and this comes from uh, Jitendra Kumar. He is the business head for forages in uh, Advanta. Uh, so you can kind of uh, judge, prejudge his question. His question is, <laughs> where do you see uh, forage seeds as an opportunity? And how does it fit into the equation of sustainability? Well, I think I mentioned in the beginning uh, about the need for attending to the non-crop related uh, uh, part of agriculture, which is livestock and others. I think um, forages in India will play a very important role in increasing uh, the productivity of livestock. You know, we are the largest milk producers in India, not because our milk yields are high, but just because we have the largest number of animals in the country, we are the largest producers of milk. So how do we improve yields of milk uh, is also very much a factor of uh, um, what feed we use. And I think forages have a huge role to play in this. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that um, the entire... Uh, shift that is taking place in the in the um, food uh, food basket of the farmer of, of the consumer uh, is driven quite a lot by milk and milk products and also the meat and other products so uh, all that has to do with uh, how efficiently we produce uh, milk and meat in the future uh, that will be again highly dependent on in the forage systems in the country. So I am. we have to bring modern technology into forages. It is not like the traditional things that we are using currently. We have to move away and then bring modern technologies, uh, which has other things apart from, uh, you know, we need to bring protein into it. We need to bring other uh, things into it. I think uh, there is a huge opportunity. Just to answer that question. Uh, part of it is clear. Uh, I think I will take uh, one more. This looks like a comment. And uh, this is from uh, the innovative farmer from Maharashtra, uh, Mr. Shaker. Uh, he mentioned that uh, you know, he wants to underline the importance of no-till agriculture. So this is a comment. Uh, you can quickly respond if you want. No-till conservation agriculture is a new agricultural practice is not mentioned in your presentation. In this new approach, we decide our tools. We probably know what uh, no-till agriculture is. So I think uh, he says that, you know, that's also key to sustainability. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, no, I think I mentioned- summarizing, yeah. or summarizing I, what he's saying. So you have I quick think, views on that. Yeah, I think I mentioned about minimum, minimum tillage in uh, when I talked about uh, economic practices. Along with the DSR, I mentioned minimum tillage as the, one of the economic practices we promoted in the country. And um, unfortunately, so far, our uptake of that technology has been very low. I think we need to do that. There is no doubt in that. In fact, I mentioned that we need to develop some seed varieties and others, which will be more suitable for that. So I have no doubt in my mind that soil conservation, which we talked about, is highly dependent on how we do this uh, no, zero till or minimum till cultivation in the country. So I have no doubt in my mind that it is a very high priority area and it will open up also use of some of the, um, the, uh, the as he said, the uh, use of some of the weed sites will be very important in that as a part of that system, weed management system. Both on Both. the same page on this matter. I think one last question and before I close this session, yeah. uh, this is from Sharad. And uh, I will read only part of the question. What is your opinion about GMOs? I have a good opinion about GMOs. But if GMOs. you can summarize it for him, it will be useful. <laughs> yeah, I have a good opinion about GMOs. Uh, uh, I feel that uh, GMOs have proven their uh, usefulness and their safety and their efficiency for more than 25 years in the world now. In India itself, in BT cotton, we have, uh, from an importing country, we have become the largest exporter of cotton because of BT cotton in India. 
um, their safety has been proved beyond doubt. There are thousands of papers available on the safety of GM uh, technology in the world. Um, GM food is consumed all over the world, including Europe. So there is no such, uh, uh, not even a single adverse health report which has come uh, till now. So I think uh, it has been proved beyond doubt if there was any experiment to prove uh, the safety of any technology, it was done only with GM foods and it has been proved. I think what is lacking right now is uh, a supportive uh, strategic intent and uh, uh, regulatory mechanism to bring more technologies to the market. But I am also not saying that GM is a panacea or GM is a silver bullet. I am saying that we need a basket of technologies in which GM has its own role. It should be used in the areas where other technologies don't deliver the same value. And in some of the crops, in, in some of the situations, uh, for example, weed management or insect resistance, uh, insect uh, control, uh, or uh, water use efficiency, fertilizer use efficiency, some of these areas, we can achieve much faster and more precise results with the GM technology and we must use it. So it's not necessary to use it everywhere. There are some areas where plant breeding gives the best results. There are some areas where gene editing gives the best results. There are some areas where even natural farming, which um, Dr. K. K. Narayanan called as oxymoron, is, uh, is also the right one to be done. So I am not um, saying that a single technology or single method of cultivation is the answer for everything. But GM has its own role and it is our intelligence to see where is that role and how to use it and uh, the government uh, the regulators and the industry and farmers' bodies uh, must uh, sit together and then decide what are those priority areas where GM can be used in the country and bring it forward for the benefit of the farmer. At the end of the day, it is the farmer's benefit if he has to compete in the international markets and if he has to be cost competitive and if he has to make money. If uh, Sharad is convinced, but I think this dialogue can uh, continue and yeah. uh, it's nice to have such dialogue in a in a civil ambience, and that's wonderful. Uh, I have several more questions. Unfortunately, uh, like I said yesterday, we are under the tyranny of the clock, <laughs> and here you have at least seven clocks. Normally, there will wow. be one clock. At the... Well, they can so, listen uh, to me. Ram, I can answer uh, them. Thank you maybe. very much uh, for okay. a wonderful presentation, and uh, I'm not sure if you can stay on for the rest of the session, but I leave it to you. Please put no. your hands together to give a big hand to Ram. He should hear it in Hyderabad. I Thank guess. you. <laughs> Thank you very much.